Simo and Ed, and we're back to give you some ideas about recession proofing your go-kart track. You're watching the Fast Line Track Growth Show, where we talk all things karting and business. So, part two. Yeah, we're talking about how to get uh, attract people in that are going to spend money with you. So start selling to those that are going to spend money with you during these uh, possible times of recession. So uh, let's dive straight in there. We're talking about marketing really to the affluent. One of the things that's a really smart story is providing the backstory. Everyone, everyone loves a good story, don't they? The do. stories have a, like a magical like quality to just lure people in. Mm -hmm. It's like something that's ingrained in us from childhood, pretty much. Most mm -hmm. of us will have had bedtime stories at exactly. night. It's just it just takes you back, mm -hmm. and there's something as well in the brain that just really connects with the, the analogy mm -hmm. and, of stories. Providing the backstory for stuff that's mm -hmm. going on around your track is really really important to the affluent. Mm -hmm. They want to know. They don't just want to know for them. They want to know so they can brag about it to their friends mm -hmm. and go, "Well, we went down to the car track." Uh, quite interesting actually mm. and you just go what's that oh you know did you know their their father set the track up 40 years ago and it was off the back of an old uh, airfield and mm. and all that sort of stuff and we go oh, I didn't realize there was an airfield down the road mm. and it's just that's the conversations that people have over the dinner table mm. that will enable you to go and a will get the word of mouth going mm but also enables them to go, oh, we checked out the old, there's still parts of the old air track there. Mm. So that's one way to do it. The other one, particularly for the affluence, is wine. So at the time of filming, I've just been in Birmingham City Centre a couple of days ago for the Commonwealth Games. There's a lovely wine store down there called uh, Loki. Loki, Loki, L-O-K-I. Phil who owns that, I know him. Really, really nice guy. When I walk in there, I love... Well, he's a really nice guy anyway, mm. but I love going in there because they've got all these wines up and you can just try them. So you put a bit of money onto like a special credit card mm. they've got, and they've got all these machines where you can, you serve yourself to the wine essentially. But I normally walk in there going, how are you doing, Phil? We have a quick catch up. I go, mm. what's good? Right? Now he doesn't just go, oh, the Sauvignon Blanc's good or the mm. Rioja or the Malbec mm. or that. He goes, oh, right, well, and he remembers stuff about me. So you go, oh, I know you really like a Malbec, so if you like that, let me tell you, there's this lovely little vineyard, and he, and he talks about it, you know, and yeah, the yeah. story comes out, you know, and it'd be like, oh, and they've got this, uh, there's this really steep valley, and uh, they can't even get tractors up there, so they still have to go and get, uh, you know, a pony to go up there, and they cut, and it's all done by hand, and like, but uh, what you actually get is the flavour starts to come out, or you could have the Sauvignon Blanc, no, I'll try what you've just told me. You see how the power of stories now pulls you in. And like the problem is, is if you've got competition, and you have for, for hard four pounds in the, in the leisure market, if you've got a story, then you suddenly become that special bottle of red that you've never tried before, yeah. or you can go to the cinema. What would you prefer? I think I'm going to go where the story is, like racing mm. the old airfield, go and have that fantastic beer that they've got from the local brewery that just is uh, made specially for their mm. track. You can't get it anywhere else. And that is all possible. Mm. It was dirt cheap to go and get your own beer made. Mm. Uh, yeah. There's a place down where I live and managed to go and get a cask made with the local brewer there. A lovely fella that owns the pub. He's like that, there you go, there's a cask just for you guys. So me and my mates have had a night out drinking my own beer. I didn't make it. It's a great story, isn't it? It's just great stories to have. It costs, I think it's 460 quid for a barrel. Yeah. And the way some of them drink, I think we got through all of it. <laughs> it was okay, it's a well, place to be like shit. It wasn't gonna be commercially available, but it worked, and they didn't care. Free beer for them. Mm. So get the backstory in yeah. there, or get the wow factor, so that you know they're going, wow, I've got to try this out. But there's a beer that you do, and it's only available at your track. Yeah, it's mm. called the checkered flag. <laughs> you know, why is that? You can only have it once you're finished <laughs> the racing. Mm. But when you do, you'll love it. So get your backstory in there. Yeah. Uh, if you haven't got one, create one. There's always stuff you can talk about. Mm. So point number six, sell on aspiration and emotional fulfillment. Yeah. It's not mm. about the money with people that have already got money. Mm. Like you go, no, oh, right, it's great. We've uh, this is going to be cheaper than going to the cinema. It's not something that's going to get the affluent no. racing to come down to your track to get to that starting line. Mm. 
So something that's aspirational and emotionally fulfilling would be very interesting. So I don't know, let's, um, I'm going to make some, literally making it off the top of my head, but how about we go get a set of Lewis Hamilton's tyres that he's used around the track and we've turned them into mm. footwear. Right. right. Yeah, the soles of these shoes are made from <clears throat> Lewis Hamilton's tyres because that can be done. Yeah. And you just go, would you like to, you come down, you come race in the car, it's £250 a session, mm. we'll get the size made for you, and then you walk away with a pair of the shoes. Like, wow. I mean, who doesn't want to get, I mean, I'd do that. I'm not even a huge Formula One fan. I know <laughs> I've got people now swearing at the screen, right? But I would pay that sort of money to go and get, like, these are Lewis Hamilton's tyres that he used mm. at Hungaro Ring, and they're 250. Uh, if I get them for Silverstone, because that's his home track, they're mm. 450. <laughs> that's the sort of stuff you get, yeah. and, and the emotional involvement and fulfilment that you get from feeling like you're part of the story, right? Suddenly, the price and everything is just yeah. immaterial. Mm. People will pay a lot of money to go and get involved mm. and feel like they're part of something. Mm. I don't know what else could there be. There could be even like, uh, I'd have a range of t-shirts and stuff. Mm. But I'd spend a lot of money on these. So I'd go like, here's the t-shirts that we have and they're different colours because you know you start off with this colour and you get this one and then this one and you can have the whole set. And anybody mm. that you see walking around here in uh, the white t-shirt has been here and just done this four times mm. or whatever it might be. So you're suddenly part of it. Cruises mm. do this really well. I've never been on one, but my friend says like, you know, you go off one and you cut the lanyard and they're all different colours. And people go, oh, you're a platinum. And my mm. friends go, they come up and they're really proud of their status. Well, they're aspirational, they're mm. emotionally fulfilled, they're affluent. Mm. They feel that they belong to something that isn't just a cruise, it's part of this secret club that you yeah. can go, the secret handshake, yeah. are you in? Yeah, yeah, well, I mean, I, mean, I belong to, to a group here mm -hmm. and they've just introduced something like that. You've got name badges you can wear to events. Oh, okay. And each name badge is a different colour, and go. it has stars on it for yeah. the number of years you've been. Cool. You, you know, and, and then of course for the ones that have been there for Not forever, for <laughs> six plus years. Mm -hmm. right, I think it, it, it basically you don't you don't get higher than that. But they have a special party every year. Oh really? And how cool is you, that? You know, and and so. One of the events we went to, there was a special party that night just for those yep. ones. Then, you, you know, the group had a, a day yep. out just for those ones. So, you, you, you know, you're creating this desire to be involved. To, to be involved. And it's like, oh, no, I'm going to hang out for six years. <laughs> I want to go see what's happening on you know, that party over yeah, there. Yeah. You know? That's really cool. So, so it sort of neatly leads mm -hmm. on to the next point, actually. Recognition. Recognition is really, really important for people mm -hmm. who are like affluent. Yeah. You know, so it could be as simple as uh, here's our first buyer of the Lewis Hamilton mm -hmm. shoes. Here's our newest member into the Checkered Flag Club. So, and then putting some details up. Mm -hmm. And if you've got like TV screens, maybe their details are up there mm -hmm. where you just go, they're part of this club mm -hmm. and you can be too. Ask for details at reception. But they suddenly then become the face of the track for a day or two or a <coughs> month or two or whatever mm. it is. And they become part of the story. Mm. So that when they're sitting minding their own business, like, you know, and they're down the, the local pub or restaurant or whatever it is, mm. somebody comes around, I saw your face down at the track the other day. That is part of that belonging and mm. like that acknowledgement that, yeah. And I don't think it'll be a, like a massive deal to them, but it will make them feel much more looked after, yeah. part of something bigger, something that they want to go and have more of. They'll crave that recognition, typically people who are affluent mm. and, and want to go and like, have a look. Like, why do people do Dragon's Den, for example? Mm. You know, I think, I don't know how many of the businesses mm. work. I think they're profitable, I'm not sure. But part okay. of it as well is getting recognized because I didn't know who any of these people were before they were on that program. Apart from Steve Bartlett, who I'm a huge fan of. Mm. I was already following him from the start, Steve, and then suddenly he's coming to mm. the mainstream. But the others I've never heard of. Mm. And then all of a sudden they've now got a platform where they're recognised for being business leaders. And they're obviously very affluent. I'm guessing they're very affluent. I'm sure they are. Yeah. Smart, smart, smart. Absolutely. So we're up to point number eight now. Yeah. Experiences. 
over just something that it is. It's it's too easy to just go, oh, we do go-karting. Mm. I, gave, I gave an example recently on another video, I think. I went into a breakfast network, networking meeting, which happens for businesses across the globe, I think. I was sitting in there, and uh, the accountant, bless him, <laughs> there's always an accountant at these bloody things, um, he stands up, mm. And he says, well, hi, I'm Fred. That's not his real name. Hi, I'm Fred, the accountant. You know the sorts of things I do. Uh, you know the sorts of stuff that we do. Uh, you know, and we'll keep you compliant. And then he sat back down. And that was his introduction to the room, right? And I'm sitting there going, gee whiz, that is like so boring. Like, I can't yeah. invest. I can't get emotionally involved. I'm not like, no, you're, just, you're never going to be my accountant, right? But the problem is, it's all about the experience over simply what you, what people can see. So you're not just a go-kart track, because the equivalent for go-kart tracks is come down and race some go-karts. Mm. So you, if you're doing that in your marketing, you're as good as that accountant. But now I've said it, right, like that. Mm. Yeah, see, there you go, that was right. Mm. That's the bane for me. <laughs> Right? If your marketing is going, come down, we're doing 10% offering, we do go-karts, your, your marketing is as shit as that accountant. I'm just going to put that out there. I get quite offended by him almost. Whereas if you sell the experience, then people can come and get more involved. Yeah. Right? So if you're going to like sort of say that the, the uh, you know, go-karting, you go, why don't you be your own Lewis Hamilton for a day? Mm. Much better. Right, Absolutely. that's already a million times better than most of the marketing that is done on mm. go-kart. You can see I'm getting quite angry there. <laughs> right, but you're selling the experience. You know. Absolutely, and, then, and to the affluent, mm -hmm. it's all about the experience. If I had a line that said mm. something like, um, the track doesn't care what car you drive, mm. you know, there's a totally different experience when you're just one and a half inches off the ground, flying around a, a tight right-hander, mm. right? That's the experience. That line is so much better than most of the marketing mm. that you see out there. Understanding your market and what really switches them on and gets them involved mm. in the experience way beyond just saying we're a go-kart truck. 10% off. 10% off, for crying out loud, I've had that text again. We keep talking about this video. I don't know how many times I have to tell the track that sending the 10% text messages to me and him, uh, it, like, good, you might point at the figures and go, yes, it does work, but I'm telling you, me and him, individually, already know how to do a better job. <laughs> so, come and speak to us. I'm gonna make you a lot mm. more money because you, you're like, mm. you're so close. You're doing all the hard work and then just, you know, it's just the message. Yeah, you're stopping, like, you're, you're digging and digging and digging, and you're getting some results, but it's like you're digging into the mine, and you've just stopped bloody one foot from the gold seam. I'm like, come mm. on, talk to us. Mm. <laughs> you know, sell the experience, um, not what it is. Yeah. So how will they feel? Notice the change in mm. emotion. Like, so it's like an emotional thing. So what? it's not what it is, it's the feeling of what happens when they get... Release behind. your inner Lewis Hamilton. Absolutely. You know? It's the difference when they put on an actual helmet, mm. when they put on the gloves, when they put on a race suit. Mm. Like you know, get get them walking the track like the F one yeah. do. Absolutely. You, you, you know, okay, it's gonna it's gonna cost you a little bit of time, but but charge them, charge them. Yeah, 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 yeah. You, you know, make them feel. Well, even that, I just go like so. Once, let's assume you've already gotten to the track and go. Mm. Now, which package were you looking for? Mm. Were you looking for um, standard Lewis Hamilton, or would you like the super go fast? Uh, we show you all the tricks, tips, and techniques, and everything yeah. you'll need to go and get the fastest time on the track today. Package up here. Um, the difference is twenty quid. Mm. Uh, oh yeah, so you, you're you, buying. You're you, already you, buying. You, you could have. Uh, look, do you want the Fernando Alonso? <laughs> do you want the? Um... Yeah, yeah. And then, like, well, who the bloody hell's, uh, what, what cheapskate is going to go, yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to have the 30 quid one, I'm going to have the, like, who's going to go, yeah, I'm not interested in being fast or anything mm. around the track. I don't want your 60 pound mm. option, I'll go for the 40 pound option and we'll go slowly around the track, weren't we kids? <laughs> no, we want to go fast, there mm. you go. Right, so start selling the experience of what they're really after. And a lot of affluent people are probably very competitive. There is anyway, a chance. You know? The guy we mentioned, I don't know if it was this video or the last one, he, he, 
he isn't noticeably competitive. <laughs> He's very chilled out. But there are a lot of them that will be up for competition. There's a line I've put into, I do a bit of marketing for one of the tracks, and one of the lines I've put in recently is something about, are you going to let your kid beat you? <laughs> <laughs> right? And that is so way beyond go-karting. Mm. That's like parent to child. Mm. Like, and there's a chance, there's a chance the kids will beat them. Was that for Father's Day? No, that was no. just a random right. comment that we threw out there. I think it's worked, but the fact that you just, it doesn't matter if it doesn't work in that immediate instance, mm. you just keep the messaging and keep doing stuff like that. People are going, there's something different about it. Mm. And the fact that you're, if you're an adult, your kid is probably lighter than you, not always, but most mm. of the time. They've already got an advantage. Yeah. So why not let them go and win? <clears throat> and you go like that, are you going to let them win? So we could have, mm. uh, we've now got the Lewis Hamilton, we've got the Super Go Fast, oh my god, like you're going to just beat everybody that does it. And mm. at the top we've got the, you can pretend mm. that uh, you let your kids win, because they're going to kick your ass package at the top here. We'll give you the slowest cart, and you've got to outpace your kid. <laughs> <laughs> you can create all sorts of experiences though. Yeah, absolutely. Which, which maybe leads us into the final point. Oh. The velvet rope. Yeah, you've got to love a velvet. <laughs> got to love a velvet rope, don't you? And I never underestimate how much mm. money you can make with a long piece of velvet rope. <laughs> Do they qualify to go past the velvet rope? Mm. Right, because if you're going to like market to the affluent, and I'm suggesting you should sell to people who money spend, sell to people who spend money, mm. right? Um, get a velvet rope. Have an area where the affluent go at your go kart track. And as soon as they step over that velvet rope, mm. they have a very different experience. Absolutely. So you can be the people that are sitting down with your, your, your cup of Bovril, mm. <laughs> having a little drink, sitting there just looking over with your cup of tea and looking over at, um, hey, life over the other side of that bit of velvet rope there looks awesome because they've got, that, that's real champagne. Mm. Oh my word, like, look at that, what do you mean they've got complimentary soft drinks? What, what do you mean there's a club? What are those t-shirts they're wearing? Mm. What the hell is going on over there? I want to go and have a part of that. Absolutely. Right? But equally, the affluent want to be seen on that right side of the velvet rope. Yeah. Room. Right? So they're going to just stand there and have their best life ever. And everybody looking on is going to see them, which ticks so many of the boxes for experience, recognition, mm -hmm. emotional fulfilment, aspirational, suggests the, like hints at their disposable income. It's like, it's not about the money, it's about the time. So the time they're spending there as well just feels like more grandiose. You, you it's know, a better backstory that they're going to tell their mates over the dinner table. Exactly. And I, and I mean, I suggest the viewers, you think about your nightclubbing experience. Mm -hmm. There's always a VIP room, and yeah, yeah. You, you know, how many of you try to get in to those VIP rooms? Well, yeah, well, quite often there's uh, like minimum spend mm. tables, you quite often find at mm. a nightclub. So I'm all for that. Like, I mm. mean, if there's 10 of us and it's like minimum spend is like 1,000 quid, right? So 100 quid each, they normally throw a few drinks in. You can have a table mm. for 10 right next to the dance floor for a grand. Right, we'll have that. Do, mm. do I have to queue behind this velvet rope? No, suddenly the velvet rope will disappear for mm. a moment. But don't worry, it will materialise <laughs> behind you. Just to stop the riffraff coming mm. in. Right, and now mm. I can stroll forward and just go straight into the VIP mm. area. Now, for me personally, it's not so much about that in the nightclub. Mm. It's just the fact that I haven't got to queue up. Yeah. My drinks are sorted. I can get on the dance floor. Mm. They don't call me snake hips for nothing. <laughs> You'll see this in Dortmund. <laughs> There's a promise. If you want a really great experience, come to Dortmund, see me dancing. So velvet, never underestimate, uh, underestimate the, the power of velvet rope. And, it, uh, and here's another bit, it doesn't have to be a piece of velvet rope. It, it's that whole concept of, velvet rope will work by the way, but it's the whole concept of just something where they can't quite, they can see it, they can't mm. quite be part of it. Exactly. And they want to be part of it. And if you've exactly. got the affluent, which you probably already have in your track, mm. they're already there. They're going, I can afford to do that and I really want to be there. So I'm going to pay you more money than I've ever paid you before mm. to do pretty much the same stuff I'm already doing, but I just want to get over the other side of that velvet mm. rope and be part of the in crowd. Yeah. Absolutely. So this is really cool. So, 
There you have it. Yep. One idea to recession proof your business. Sell to those who spend. Exactly. And, and there's nine, I think, points on how yeah. to get more akin to selling to people that will spend with you and recession proof your business. All right. But, Uro from me. Cheerio from me. And we'll see you next week.